<laughs> I think, I think. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> Are we just waiting for the text message? Okay. Okay, we're going live. Um, good evening and welcome everyone. Thank you all for joining us today on our sixth episode of season two of, of Women in Animation Bay Area YouTube Live Q&A. My name is Vrinda and I use she and her pronouns. Uh, I'm a freelance artist and a volunteer with the Women in Animation Bay Area team. Um, our hope through this series, which began, began last year uh, when Shelter in Place began, is to provide some education, resources, and a little entertainment to the amazing underrepresented uh, gender identity communities, including women, non-binary, and transgender individuals uh, who want to pursue and thrive in the animation industry. So please subscribe to our channel and put down questions in the chat you want us to talk about, and we'll do our best to answer them. Um, today, we're chatting with Cora and Kaylin. Um, I think we should take a minute uh, to talk a little bit about you guys. Uh, can you tell us a little more about the types of creative work you do and um, where you are in the world right now and how you're feeling today? Sure. Um <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, do you want to go first? No, um, you go first. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. Um, so, hi guys, I'm Cora. Um, I go by she and her pronouns. Um, most of my work kind of revolves, like I do a little bit of everything, so it's kind of hard to say I only do like visual development. Um, I've definitely done like concept art and visual development for games. So most of that being like backgrounds and characters, but I've also done like storyboarding for clients and like I've done murals. Um, I've done like short cycle animations and, you know, single illustration work too. So I do a lot of little things here and there. Um, and what was the other, what was the other question? How am I feeling? I'm feeling yeah, and, and where you are in the world today. Oh yeah, so I'm here in um, Sacramento, California. Awesome. Yeah, so that's where I'm at. And um, I'm Kaylin Kennedy. I use she, her pronouns. I am a freelance character designer and illustrator. I do work for clients and independent projects. And I also do a lot of personal work. I design products for my online shop. I make stickers and enamel pins and handmade polymer clay jewelry. And like pre-pandemic, I used to do like um, anime conventions and CTN and Ground Zero Animation Expo. And um, I also like worked part-time in an art supply store. And I am also in Sacramento, California. And um, I'm feeling good today. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome um so our topic for today is resilience and wellness through the pandemic um I know since you guys are both freelance artists that you'll have been working from home through the pandemic mm -hmm. and I just want to you know just kind of start by establishing like what it's been like for you guys um to kind of balance creative work through the pandemic whether it's work or personal work, uh, what's it been like? Uh, Cora, I'll ask you first. Yeah, sure. Um, like in the first year of the pandemic, it was actually kind of slow for me, but I was still like teaching like character design and like more entertainment art stuff. Um, teaching was great. Everyone's like, please work remotely. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. So on that forefront, that was pretty chill but then I would say in the beginning of this year like freelance really just was like like every week I pretty much had a new project and I would say in the beginning I didn't really have like a good balance of doing freelance work and like doing my own stuff so it was kind of hard and like now I'm finally catching up with all of it um but yeah I would say like in this past year you know us being getting out the last bit of COVID it was like it was a lot. It was a lot of fun, a lot of cool projects. Um, 
doing some stuff for like Twitch streams, doing stuff for like, for um, Oakland Leaf and doing a lot of like branding stuff. It was, yeah, there's a lot of good fun projects, you know, so. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I, it was kind of like a weird transition because I was kind of doing like retail part-time and like kind of doing like personal work part-time and also like before the pandemic I had taken a break from my online shop because I needed to and also taking a break from like events so that kind of transition was like kind of already set up and I kind of was able to slow down and take a break from like all the things that I had going on but also I like I had very little motivation but I was able to like continue to work on some personal projects and then get a few different clients um, throughout the year and that was really cool because I got to work on some stuff that like I didn't think that I would be able to um so yeah it was it was an interesting transition it was I feel like it was necessary for me to try to slow down and kind of recalibrate what I kind of wanted to do with my freelance career and kind of have more options that's awesome. yeah that's awesome I feel like that has been kind of both a, a you know blessing and a curse with you know people who already work at home to have the rest of the world also kind of join in. Um, and so I'll ask you a little bit about what, how, what your approach has been towards wellness and self-care uh, over the past year, especially since, you know, like not only had you been working from home, doing a bunch of freelance, but also, you know, there's the, the added kind of scarcity of work just because, you know, the world went through a hard time, we all did. Um, so how was, how was that for you, Kaylin? And what did you, what was, what was, what was some things that worked really well for you? Um, well, I feel like what worked really well is that I had already had a therapist and it was kind of helpful to have kind of like, um, someone to help me with my mental health just before and after the pandemic started. And, um, it's and it was like I was able to be more flexible with my work so I was able to like take more breaks when I needed to I felt like I like I allowed myself to like if I needed to take the day off I could and I was able to because I was able to get um unemployment checks so I was like just I had like that um kind of like a like a blessing to kind of just kind of relax and not stress out about that and also I'm living at home so I had a roof over my head it's not something that I had to worry about so I was able to like take advantage of these opportunities that I was just able to um, kind of maintain this healthy balance of trying to manage my work and my life in a way that was um healthier than I had been doing so in the past um yeah does that answer the question (laughs) yeah yeah absolutely I feel like that is like you know really 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 important just like having somebody to talk to even even if there is no pandemic Mm -hmm. um so that's that's awesome uh Cora what about you what has what has been kind of your go-to wellness uh during the pandemic. Yeah. Um, love that you mentioned the therapist, Caitlin. Like I definitely, that was something I also was doing. I was using like the therapist like app. I forgot what it was called. Obviously I use it like a whole ton. Um, but the app, I used an app for like a little bit and that was like really helpful too, especially when things in the beginning were like very scary. Um, most of my family lived out of state. So I do just have, I had like an apartment in Berkeley at the time. Mm-hmm. I move closer to family. Um, the app was very helpful, but sometimes like I'm on the phone too much and I'm like, I need to take a break from that. Um, but mostly like I've been doing this for a few years now. Um, cause I got a really bad burnt out from like doing freelance and schooling, um, back in like 2015. And so I just took up martial arts and just working out all the time. That was, that's my go-to. So that little, little context, my boyfriend and I, we, training jujitsu and we do Muay Thai so we're really martial arts heavy but we love just you know working out also like playing with our dog like being outside because sometimes when I'm on the screen I'm like 
I kind of like paralyzed myself with like overthinking, you know, just like, oh, this client's not gonna like this. And like, I'll just go in a tunnel essentially. Um, but yeah, I more I normally just work out and like I'll kick a heavy bag or something, or I'll like hit mitts or something with my brother. And that's kind of what I normally do. So different that's things. awesome. I mean, that that makes so me cool. want to. <laughs> No, I recommend it to like, I say this to my mentee group all the time too. If you guys are watching, hello. Um, <laughs> like it's good to, especially like Muay Thai and like even kickboxing, even any kind of like, you know, cardio, like some people even like the nine round stuff really like that too. It just like, I'll have like the worst day ever. And it can be like clients didn't do this. My students aren't being really polite to me today. Um, and I'll just like take it all on the bag, on the mats, and then I'm chill. And I'm like, okay, that's, it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> cool. That's awesome. <laughs> it, it's really helpful to have like a reset because then you're not carrying all the baggage from like, you know, previous, you know, years and, um, or just previous day. I think that's like kind of where people are moving to today is they're trying to kind of like move past everything that happened um, in the past year. And I know, especially like a lot of students, and, you know, newly graduated people would love to hear, like, what, what would you, what would you recommend they do, you know, like in terms of balancing freelance and just like work or, uh, or I mean, life. And if they're just getting into it, um, what would you say are things that are helpful um, to know, you know, from the start, especially like post pandemic? Um, Cora, I'll ask you. Yeah, if you started freelancing post pandemic, that's a little nutty. <laughs> like, I'll give you guys that. Like, um, I mean, I've been just again a little, little more backstory on me. Like, I've been freelancing since I was like 19 or 20. So I've been doing it for like a long time. And it still took me, like, I still have problems like freelancing. It's getting your rhythm and understanding how to talk to clients and like how to present yourself um, is very like that's no matter what you do, especially if you're starting now, that's going to take time for you to like, mm -hmm. everyone does it so differently too. Like for me, I would say if I were to give like a, a new person, like freelance advice, like one, always have a contract. Don't ever, don't be like, yeah, we're chill. I'll do some work for you. Like don't do that ever. Um, when it comes to like bigger companies, um, you know, have someone who like knows how to do your taxes, like for freelance. Cause I kind of messed up doing that too. And I was like, Oh no, like this kind of bit me harder than I wanted it to. <laughs> um, you know, like there's people who really just specialize in helping you doing your 1099 and those like, you know, your extra like contract stuff. Um, what else? Like, don't also take it personally when clients like don't like your stuff right away. Cause like, a lot of time I was just actually talking to my friend who does freelance for like web design. And he was like, I'm so fed up. Like they told me to make a cow look like sexy. And I'm like, how do I, it's a website. Like, how do I do that? You're like, what? It's a, it's a milk brand. Like it was super yeah. weird, but like, you know, sometimes clients ask you weird stuff and sometimes you have to roll with it. You can't be like, okay, this just doesn't go in my portfolio, but I can just say like, I did this, you know? So I would say like prepare for bumpiness and tell things like, you know, the right clients and the right gigs kind of talk mm -hmm. to you. Um, I, I totally second that. It's hard to jump in, but I, I, there's been so many times where I've been, you know, working with a, with the, on a project and, you know, like it's just what they want is not lining up with what I'm doing. And it's kind of a bummer. Like you people, like we tend to be really hard on ourselves and, we tend to kind of like take the blame as like, oh, I'm not like doing what I, what it, I'm not doing my job well. I'm not providing the service. Right. But I think there's been so many times where, you know, I've stopped working with a client because it wasn't vibing. And then I was approached by another client and it was perfect. Like, you know, I, it was almost like, you know, like when they say like bad luck saves you from worse luck, it was, it was, it was better to have, um, something that works, then struggle uh, when it doesn't. And, and that's hard to know when you're first starting out, like when to kind of dip out and say like, okay, this is just not um, the right no. situation. Yeah. And that's, I would say like, that is something took me a long time to figure out too. Like me and this client just don't vibe and that's okay. Like I'm not giving them what they want. Like it's, I mean, 
like I've had to do that before I had to like wrap up client stuff. I'm like, I'm sorry, but I'm breaking up with you. Like, I don't want to, but this is how we have to do things, you know? But most of the time, if you're like really good at communicating, which is another thing mm-hmm. that like communicating to your clients, because a lot of the time, like it is kind of like um, hurting cats a little bit, especially if they don't understand your industry, which is probably like 99% of the clients you'll have is they don't know what you're doing is why they hire you. Right. So um, also prepare to like really be testing your patients a lot of time too. Absolutely. And, and, and put yourself and your wellness first, That's you know, right. like if, if you need to respond to this email two days later, totally acceptable. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, Kaylin, I'll ask you the same question. Uh, what would you say has been helpful? Um, what, what would you say would be helpful to, you know, uh, new freelancers or existing freelancers? Um, just given the current situation? Um, yeah, so I think, like, like you said, like knowing your boundaries and like enforcing your boundaries, whether it's like personal or professional or like a balance of both with like your clients and yourself uh, on like projects you have to do, like personal projects or client work. I think it's important to kind of just kind of cut yourself some slack and um, take breaks when you need to. Um, take time for yourself, uh, take care of your physical and mental health, however you need to. Um, and also, uh, it's important to utilize social media. Um, I know social media is kind of, kind of chaotic and it's constantly changing. Um, but like, there's like a lot of like cool ways to like kind of learn about, like you can like utilize like free resources like YouTube, you can look up like social media marketing and like digital marketing kind of stuff um I kind of just maintain like an online presence um and you don't have to get like super involved in social media because I know sometimes social media kind of sucks and um earlier on the pandemic I was trying to like like oh I, I have plenty of time to be on Twitter or on Instagram and it was kind of too much and I was like okay I don't need to be on here all the time, (laughs) but I still wanted to be somewhat active. So it's like, you can like participate in like popular hashtags when they're happening. Um, Like get like artwork that you have, like just like in a folder. It's like, oh, whenever this shows up, let me post this, like that kind of thing. Um, And I've gotten most of my um, clients that way in the past couple of years. Um, Yeah, so, uh, mental health and social media. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that actually segues into a great topic um, <laughs> that I really, I find really helped me to talk to people about over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think is, what is your preferred way of uh, finding clients? And what, what is one way that you've known existed but are afraid to try? Um, I think Twitter, because I've mostly got most of my clients through Twitter, or just like people that have showed interest in my work and like want to contact me later. Or um, maybe we talked about a project, but it just didn't work out. But like, maybe another project or something. Um, But I, because I participate in a lot of the hashtags and a lot of the popular hashtag get a lot of traction. So that's kind of where most of it comes from because it's like sort of trending or whatever in like the art community so yeah I think that's kind of just the best way to go about it awesome Cora what about you um I kind of get my work through like word of mouth and sometimes even through like well Instagram for sure Mm -hmm. LinkedIn I've got some work through there um and also just like collaborating um, a lot too, like I collaborate with artists, like doing like a single illustration where me and the artist will kind of like cross promote each other doing like a piece together. And so, you know, they'll see like, oh, you follow so-and-so, like your work, what you do this. And that also kind of did a lot of cool stuff too. I don't really dabble in, I kind of have this love hate relationship with social media. So I don't really do it too much, do it like once or twice a month kind of thing. Um, but 
it has gotten me a lot of work though. So I'm not going to say like, don't ever use it for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, mostly through, yeah, social media, word of mouth and just collaborating with uh, other others. So agreed. (laughs) It's fun. Awesome. Yeah. I feel like social, social media can be hard. Um, because it's like, especially for artists, it's like, you know, fine line between entertainment and work. Mm -hmm. Um, and you're, as you're scrolling, you're kind of going through different, different bits of, you know, feed. And it's awesome to have it, to see everybody's work, but it's also adds to, you know, being hard on yourself and, um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's definitely a, a tough thing to balance. Um, what, what have you found to be kind of the healthy balance for you with social media? And it it could be about posting your work or posting about your social life. Um, ask, uh, Cora. Uh, sure. Like, uh, I balance social media. Um, so I normally just, my, my, my thing is just going outside for like a little bit, honestly, that's kind of how I balance it. Um, I'm still on social media a lot of the time because a lot of, I do like, go, I go hiking and I'll do some like urban exploring and I'll go hang out with my friends and stuff. So it's, that's kind of where I find my balance is just like not being in the house and just doing something that doesn't make me want to look at my phone. That's kind mm-hmm. of, I guess where my balance is. Um, I guess on the sense of like posting work though, like, I, cause it's like social media is kind of hard, like for me, cause like Cause now the algorithm is like, it's really changed a lot, at least, especially since COVID, you know, started, like I've noticed like significantly like follows and likes have dropped like a lot since they changed things. So I'm like, before I used to be like, oh man, like no one likes my work. This is looking so bad. What if I do wrong here? And then you go down that whole tunnel, you know? So I think for me, I just kind of taken an overall break of that. Um, and just doing it once or twice a month. I know a lot of concept artists that do that too, where they just post like a really good piece for like once or twice a month and like, cool, bye. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of my, that's my balance right there is not giving it too much of my physical time and energy. So what about you, Kaylin? I know that, you know, you just mentioned you use Twitter a lot. Um, what has helped with balancing, you know, social media time? Um, sometimes I just like, if I see, things that I just don't want to deal with I just log off I'll like some most of the time I just use it for fun um because every I'm every so often I'll post like old artwork like if I'm not creating I'm not creating artwork every day and I'm not posting artwork every day but usually I'll just post like old artwork so I don't feel the pressure to constantly create and it's like there's always going to be somebody new who hasn't seen it or somebody that just wants to see it again so I just kind of recycle a lot of the work that I've been posting and I have enough artwork to do that so I'll just do that periodically and then sometimes I might talk about a show that I'm watching or just like my life or I'll like comment on like a friend's post or something or I'll share artwork that I like or just funny things like memes and stuff I'm very casual like I don't think social media should be strictly business when you're an artist it can be very casual and very fun and sometimes there's just not so much fun stuff on social media so I try to prioritize the fun part of it and if it's not Mm -hmm. fun like all right I'm gonna do something else (laughs) I'm gonna watch a show or like hang out with my mom or something (laughs) yeah or like go to my grandma's house like just just do something different where I'm like, I don't need to be on this website or I don't need to be on social media because I don't really have a desire to be on it as often as I used to. I don't feel the pressure to constantly creating work and being present online because it's just not always necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Definitely not always necessary. Mm -hmm. Um, We've talked a lot about wellness. Uh, The other part that I wanted to talk to you guys about is resilience. Uh, Both of you have been creatives for a while um, and it's hard. It's hard to keep at it. Um, Kaylin, what has been kind of your motivation and what has helped you stick with it um, through kind of, you know, the course of your career as well as just the pandemic? Um, I draw a lot of things that I just don't post just 
because I just feel like, like, oh, this isn't good enough. And sometimes I just worry about that. But um, eventually I'm like, okay, this is pretty cool. Maybe I can finish up the sketch and share it if I want to. But a lot of my drawing, I don't post, but I like to kind of get in the habit of creating things without worrying about if anybody else is going to see it. Because that takes a lot of the pressure off and it makes creating a lot more fun when you're not worried about other people and what they think and I sometimes experience experiment with like different mediums or like in different styles that I don't usually do and that's kind of helped in the long run with like final pieces that I've made throughout my career and I like to do um, polymer clay and my style in creating with clay is very different than doing digital art um, because it's a physical medium and it's mostly jewelry <laughs> Um, I like to make miniature food. Um, oh. Sometimes I'll do like characters. I'll just do fun stuff that I just like to do. And yeah, I just like to try a variety of things and then see if it sticks. And yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's a great approach to creative work. Uh, Cause you know, you can learn things in one style and take it to another and it just adds to it. Um, Cora, same question for you. What has helped you be resilient um, in this career path? I think part of it is because I'm really stubborn. <laughs> I think, um, well, yeah, there, there is a bit of that. But I, I will say, like, I definitely had some time where I've, like, questioned going into art. Like, I'm not going to say it's been, like, a pure path, like, the whole time. Um there was even one time I thought like, oh, I'm totally going to quit art and just do like kickboxing or something like that. Like I can just <laughs> really do that, like whatever. Um, but like when I thought about doing that, cause I did take, I did take, I didn't finish school. So I took off for like a little bit, like a six months to a year, I think. And I just started training all the time. And I was just like, and once I started doing that more, I was like, oh man, I really miss drawing like so much. What am I doing? You know? And sometimes like, I think, as artists, like kind of like what Caitlin said, like just to explore different things to kind of make you come back to where your core was is really important. So I think for me personally, I had to like do something different for a while. That wasn't like picking up a pencil because I've, def I've definitely done like sculpture. I've done a lot of like, like I'm primarily like an oil painter. I love working on oil with oils and like doing, you know, working acrylics or mur uh, murals or watercolors even. Did a lot, I had a plein air experience too, where I was just going around like painting coffee shops and stuff. And it was really fun. Um, but yeah, I think, I think what the turning point, like, cause I've always been an artist. Like I've always been drawing since I was a kid, never really stopped doing it, you know? And so when I had like this stroke of like, oh, like, I need to do something different. It just felt like I can come back to it in a different perspective, you know, like, mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't need to be like married to this idea and I can still be an artist and do all these different things, you know? So I think what that really made me like, cause I think Caitlin, you went to Academy of Art as well, right? Yeah, yeah cause like when going to Academy of Art, they were like, you can only eat and breathe art. And that kind of scared me a little <laughs> bit, you know? <laughs> still love Academy of Art, that's a great school. Um, but like, uh, I think, doing different things kind of helped me like have a better relationship with my art. So now I do a lot more like, like mental health comics. I do a lot of more like very vulnerable, like very, um, very soft and emotional artwork now, like mostly comics or like animation stuff. Um, and it feels better because also like kind of talking about like mental health and resilience and you know going through a hard like going through any kind of hard time mm -hmm. um it's given me a chance to kind of talk to other people and I think that's the thing for me I just love being able to talk to other people through my artwork like hey like we kind of went through this thing like and how we've overcome it and I think that's the part where like my like my like my goal in my art has changed but just because I got to explore and do something different for a while so mm -hmm. yeah that's that's kind of yeah, that's so true. I feel like most of most people who kind of chose this path, um, they used to, it started off being a hobby. It started off being something you do, you know, with school, um, your drawing and all your classes, like it's always a thing that you're doing. Um, and so once it becomes a career, you kind of need other stuff to be yeah. like a breakaway, um, which is which is which is really hard 
to do because I feel like, especially when you're freelancing, your mind is telling you to dedicate all your energy to finding new clients, to doing the work, to growing. And there's so many lists that we make for ourselves that it kind of almost harms us from being more resilient and, you know, causes burnout. Yeah. Um, which segue into next question. Um, what are your thoughts on burnout? Have you experienced it? Uh, what has been kind of the cure for you? And how do you avoid it, uh, Kaylin? Burnout is a real pain in the butt. <laughs> I've been, I've been doing better lately, but since I, like my last year of school, I have like suffered like this really like severe burnout where it's just, I have very little motivation or energy to do something that I loved. And it's like, do I even love this anymore? I don't know. <laughs> but I was like, I, I mean, I could do other things, but I'm not that great at other things. I mean, I could try to be, but this is kind of what I meant to do. So I got to figure out a different approach to kind of reestablish my relationship with creativity. And, and that goes with like trying different things, like different mediums or doing things that aren't art. Um, well, most of my hobbies are creative. They're just not drawing, like sculpting mm-hmm. something um, or watching shows, something that I really love to do, just watch shows. Um, and yeah, it's, burnout is, it's kind of been one of the things that's kind of really held me back from like my full potential and all the things that I really want to do and things that I've been excited about. And it's hard for me to maintain that excitement when I don't have the energy to match that excitement. And it's annoying. (laughs) Because I'm like, oh, there's so many cool things that I want to do, but I don't feel like it. I'm tired. My soul is tired. My, My mind is tired. But I've been doing better with kind of reestablishing my relationship with creativity and not overworking myself and kind of like forcing myself to stop negative self-talk about am I even good enough to do this or do I even have the strength to continue to do this for the rest of my life and it's like I do it's just I have to pivot and think of different ways to approach it or recalibrate or take breaks when I need to, maybe take breaks more often than I need to, than I think that I need to. And, and it's worked. I've had a lot more joy in the past few months amongst all this chaos and nonsense and pain and heartache. I've had to kind of, kind of like recalibrate what, really makes me feel joy and force myself to do those things and um just let myself feel joy so I can put that joyous energy into what I love doing that's so beautiful like find (laughs) find the joy because I feel like it's yeah it's I mean it like in my day-to-day I'm not thinking about joy and now I will because I feel like you're right it's like so important like you you if you're working on something just because you feel like you have to like it's going to get in your way later on you know you're preventing yourself from enjoying it um that's so wise (laughs) um uh yeah um burnout how do I deal with burnout and avoiding it I mean I am kind of a little nutty when it comes to burnout because if it's my personal like work not client work I don't I can totally spend like 10 hours working on a single project and I don't care I can do that I've done it multiple times where I see my my wonderful partner being like hey um you need to eat you need to like (laughs) and like chill out for a sec go to the bathroom <laughs> like like I'm in here I'm in the tunnel like don't mess with me right now um <laughs> but that's on every time I've definitely been really burnt out on projects where I'm just like 
oh my God, like they're asking for so many edits, which is part of the process. You got to get used to that. But sometimes it's like, it's like, you do, you kind of do, and you kind of don't get used to it, you know, at the same time, like you just kind of mm-hmm. like, this, it's part of the job, you know, but how I normally deal with it. Like I only, honestly, I kind of made a new rule with me recently. I only, I only freelance probably six months out of the year. And then I teach, um, because teaching is not necessarily easier, but it's just a set expectation for me every day that like, Hey, like I, I know I just got to teach this curriculum and like, that's it. And just have a good time. You know, um, mm-hmm. I'm an art teacher. Like I'm not like an English teacher. So everyone's usually going to have fun, like in an art class, you know? Um, so, uh, for freelance though, I only do it for a set amount of year. Usually when I'm out, off of, like a teaching contract or something, mm-hmm. um, just because I don't want to like get that bad taste in my mouth from freelance because I've had this past year a lot of really fun projects and I'm like wow this is awesome I could do this all the time and I'm like wait <laughs> that's not every time so that's kind of what I do and then to avoid burnout like you know again I I think what I do I just go watch a tv show too or I just go like go have a nice meal somewhere, you know, something that isn't in my house or in my, or in your studio, you know, something like that. Um, yeah. And, or I just, you know, I keep it really simple too. If I still feel like I still want to draw, but I just don't want to draw like this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll just go take a sketchbook and I'll go draw in the park somewhere too, you know, like, or I'll just draw my dog, you know, just something that's like, you're just very peaceful, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah. That's awesome. I feel like movie shows are a common thread. I mean, I, I, I totally get it because it's like you can watch while you work um, mm-hmm. and it totally, I, I, I've i tried to kind of analyze what about it is really helpful, but it is just like, maybe it's just like people are talking or like, yeah, you know, you're like, you feel like you're not alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what are some of your favorite TV shows? I know this is like not, technically you know the platform but it is a part of wellness so uh I have so many um I am very excited about the gospel reboot I was I think I was like 13 when I yes, first started watching the gospel gospel reboot. Reboot. and I was obsessed <laughs> and I'm very excited about the reboot I really like it it's very different but it also like feels very much the same like it's just it's just a, I think it's a really good reboot so far and there's only been like two episodes I was like the first episode um I also started re-watching Teen Wolf with a friend um what else I oh I finished watching um Orphan Black which is one of my favorite shows um it's so good um also I really like um Owl House and Amphibia and there's like a lot of shows that I just love watching. I love the animated shows and live action shows. I love drama. I love teen dramas. I've watched, I've loved teen dramas since before I was a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Claire, what are some of your favorite shows? <laughs> Dude, I, I'm kind of really bad when it comes to TV shows because I burn through TV shows a lot when I'm working too. Like I just, um, I actually just watched like it was at Fear Street. My friend, I'm like really, I'm such a weenie when it comes to horror movies. And so my friend was Kim was like, we're gonna watch this and we're gonna watch it at night and not during the day. And we're gonna watch <laughs> it. And I'm like, okay, I'll do this. And so I sat there and I was terrified with the first and the second one because it's like a it's like a kind of like a six-hour movie, but they just broke it up on and that one I was like the ending, I was like, this is pretty good. And I don't normally like stuff like that. So Fear Street. 1994, 1984, I think, and then and then 1666. Mm-hmm. That one was really good. Invincible. If you guys have not watched that, mm-hmm. oh my god, you guys need to watch. I didn't know this, but it was my best friend's like favorite comic, and I was like, yeah, whatever. You just read your comics, like whatever. I still read comics. <laughs> but I didn't want to read this one in particular. And yeah. I think Amazon came out with it and I was blown away with the animation in this. It's very gory. If you don't like that, don't watch it. <laughs> um, but it's like pretty much a love note from like everything that is comic or superhero related. Um, and it's great. It's really good. Um, 
Invincible is a really good one. I just started watching um, Never Have I Ever. So I'm definitely a sucker for like teen, like gossip TV shows. That one was really great. I love the main <laughs> character, even though she's kind of a brat the whole time. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, I just want to hug you because you're grieving. Sorry, I don't want to like give any spoilers. Sorry, if you guys haven't yeah, seen yeah. it. Um, no, it's, it's great. I, I watched the first one and I was like, what, why did I watch this? I was like, why, why did I watch this? And then I'm literally... Like the day the second season came out, I was like, I'm watching this. <laughs> I'm totally watching this. It was so good. Like, I I mean, I just started watching it from season one into like the new season two. And I was just like, this is, pretty, this is pretty okay. Also, the thing is, I do like kind of trash TV. Like I did like watch like Manifest. If you guys watched that one where like the plane disappears oh, and they come back oh. after five years. Like it definitely felt like a CW show. And I was like, why am I watching? It's just so bad that I have to keep watching it. Like I just have yeah. to know. <laughs> and so that's kind of how I watch TV is watching really bad TV. And then I'm there for like, I was on a plane about a month ago for the first time after a long time. And I watched manifest and it was like <laughs> the most like trippy, like I don't, I do not recommend watching a, a, a plane related thing on a plane. Oh my God. Wait, they were, yeah, I was going to say like, they're playing that on a plane. That's like watching snakes on a plane while you're on a plane. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay i we're, we're receiving many audience questions oh. so i'm going to segue into that cool. um for both of you do you have any favorite or unexpected ways to market your work to potential clients and also existing and pl- past clients um Kaylin, do you want to go first? I feel like you. Uh, I guess um, <laughs> mostly I just um, use social media, and also like I like before the pandemic, I would go to like conventions, and most of them were like local, like in like the Bay Area or like Southern California, just like in California. And yeah, that's a, also a good way. But because there's a pandemic, I think there's some conventions that are opening back up, or they're doing things virtually. So I think that's a good way to also get your name out there, especially locally. You get to meet people. Um, uh, just like networking in general. Um, and you can like network virtually, like you can just like talk to people on like Instagram and Twitter. Um, just say like, hey, I like your art style or like, oh, I also like the show <laughs> or, um, you know, just different ways to just like kind of just how you would kind of casually communicate with people if you were at a convention or a networking event or at school or anywhere really, just like kind of just casually talk to people. And you kind of don't have the pressure of like being in person and like feeling awkward because if you're awkward, I mean, nobody can see you. So I mean, (laughs) (laughs) so there's there's fewer consequences, fewer um, chances to be kind of like embarrassed, but like you, you can still like if you're a shy person I've been a shy person my whole life but I've kind of like managed different ways to kind of use my personality to kind of like I don't know I'm I'm generically a friendly person so I kind of just use that (laughs) so um yeah just kind of like be yourself and make friends uh, casually or like find a new best friend I don't know do what you want (laughs) just like uh put yourself out there and like create work that you want to create like if you want to create fan art of some obscure show that you watched 10 years ago or do fan art of like a popular trending show or just do both um yeah (laughs) awesome cora same question make your extroverted friends be networking for you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, I can't I can do that. And if my really friendly friends, like, Hey, go talk to them and like, try to like do that. Cause you know, you have your friends who are like really charming and they just like love you. Like in the first three sentences, that's like almost all of my friends. So I make them do that. <laughs> so, no, um, but part of actually, this actually works for me a lot too. Um, when I was still living in the Bay and I was doing a lot of more traditional artwork um, and there was still a lot of studios in like in Berkeley and Oakland too. I used to just make little paintings or do prints of my work. 
And I just hit up a bunch of coffee shops and be like, Hey, like, can I hang my work here and stuff? My business card. I got in a lot of people who like, well, contact me that way because like people, like, especially in the Bay were like, I want to hang out at all the coffee shops. I'll just go a new one every week, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I remember once, this is when I was still in school and I was like working this like barista job and I had my artwork in this place too. And this guy like walked up to me and he's like, Hey, can I order this, this, and this? And he's like, I'm like, yeah, totally get your coffee, like whatever. And he looked at me like super weird. He's like, you're a ladybird. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I was like, wait, you're a ladybird. Is this yours over here? You're a ladybird. And I was just like, I saw your artwork at this Eller coffee shop. Like he was just like mind blown that he saw my artwork somewhere else that he was meeting wow. me for the first time. So I've gotten like into, because I know there's also like, um, like fine art galleries too, that like to like, they'll do that for murals too. Like they'll like, Hey, I saw you're working here. I just want to contact you and just, cause you know, mm -hmm. stuff. Like I always did the copy route. Like I made probably most of my connections passing someone a cup of coffee. Cause they always want to tell you all your feelings when you guys do that for some reason. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I know this was for the guests, but I'll, I'll, I also have uh, a method that I recommend to everybody, cold emailing. I know it sounds super intimidating, but I'm telling you, like, even if you get no response, there is something so like nice about receiving an email from somebody that wants to work with you. And I think people like receiving those emails. People make notes of those emails, especially like our directors and producers. So cold email somebody, <laughs> share your work. It works. <laughs> um, okay, next question. This is kind of a fun one. So I'll do this first and then the more serious ones. But this is like a game show question. What will be a harder decision? Accepting a job you're not feeling, but knowing it's a great opportunity or accepting a lower paying job but it's something you're more, more excited about. That's really tough. That's really tough. Uh, <laughs> I think I might accept the lower paying job because <laughs> I like being excited about projects that aren't my own. I like when other people have their own projects that they're excited about and it's very exciting to be a part of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm, like, I'm, I'm tempted to take the other one. I'd be like, ah, but like, I can have fun. <laughs> <laughs> I would oh That's the fun one. <laughs> yeah, definitely the fun one. Like, I've I've been on projects where I didn't really like resonate with the work they were doing, and I just. If it just paid, if it was livable, if it was not livable, I'd be like, I don't know. I like it. I don't know if I like it that much. But if it's a livable wage, you know, and I got to work on something really, really cool, I probably would take that job too. Where, yeah. yeah, I think I think I, I second that. I've also done the thing where taking a job because it pays well, didn't enjoy it, and then uh, it catches up with you over time. Like I you know, can't do that anymore. I, it just like, it's, it's not fun. You kind of, you know, get more burnt out because you're kind of being not yourself. Um, so yeah, I would also take uh, the lower paying job because it's fun. <laughs> um, okay. For both guests. What are some art styles or mediums you wish you were better at? Ooh, that's a really good one too. It's another game show style question. Yeah. Um, digital 3D, I, cause I love 3D artwork and I like sculpting, but like digital 3D, like learning software, it's, it's, like, a, it's like a huge difficulty for me. Like if I have to learn a new software, I'm like the mental energy it takes to learn something new. <laughs> yeah. um, and also like maybe ceramics. I like ceramics. I haven't done ceramics since high school, but I really like looking at ceramics and I think I'm gonna really, like do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Awesome. Yeah, totally. Totally. 3D. 3D is like, I feel like it's like on everybody's wish list, but um, it's a hard one to get into. One yeah. day I'm going to Blender and then I'm sorry. That will be it. <laughs> it's right there. It's free. <laughs> Yeah, mine is also the 3D. Um, I mostly, yeah, do illustration work. And my, my mentor is like, like, Corey, you can learn 3D. And I'm like, I don't want to. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I will do it regardless. Because I've I actually taught myself how to do SketchUp. Like, that was like my little intro to the more of the other 3D programs. But um, everyone wants Maya. So we got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I feel too. I feel like I have worked for so many years, mastered 2D style. Why do I have to do this new thing? Um, and I think part of it is because it's intimidating and it's new and you're not good at it right away. Um, but I think it's it's a very, you know, fun tool to have. Like I know illustrators who work in 2D, but they, they use 3D like um modeling as a reference they like they'll like mock up like something to get the perspective right and then they use that as a guide and I'm like oh that's like genius you know mm-hmm. um but I guess that's that's how it goes for everybody but that's awesome um next one wow there's a lot guys um <laughs> we have time though um, do you think it's necessary to have a traditional college or art education to be a professional artist? Mm. <laughs> really. I mean, it kind of depends how you learn. Um, if you work best in like a classroom environment, maybe, but because there's so many different online resources, um, that are like either free or you pay for it. Like there's just so many more options. Like when I graduated high school, I didn't have that many options or I wasn't aware of them. Now there's just so many. (laughs) And yeah, I don't think going the traditional route of going to college for an art career is necessary. Um, If you want to, um, yeah, I think you should, or take some local classes, like maybe like something that you're interested in or like a community college. Um, yeah, like do, like you don't have to be like tied to like a specific curriculum um, if you know what you wanna do, um, cause you can learn like your foundations at a community college and then learn like how to do storyboarding from like an online class or do 3D. <laughs> blender tutorials on youtube like there's a lot of there's so many options it's so cool (laughs) i love it (laughs) yeah i'm kind of in agreement too like for someone who didn't really finish going to art school in general like i do think it's important to have a mentor though i do think that like having someone who can kind of who has a lot more experience than you to kind of critique your work and and kind Mm -hmm. of guide you i think that's important for sure um but getting the degree because when I when I was working at a studio they were like you don't really need that like Mm -hmm. it was good to have like it still looks good nice to have on your resume but I think what they're looking for is someone who knows under really just understands design and you can definitely do that through like what uh Kaylin said through like YouTube tutorials going to like maybe going to like a professional has done it and taking a class from those people um, someone who, you know, also is kind of like the up and coming, like, I think that's a lot better than, you know, getting yourself into debt and then stressing out about how to cover all that debt. Yeah. Um, yeah. hundred percent agree. I think like every time I've tried to apply for a job or try to talk to somebody, the last thing they ask to see is where I went to college. They just want to see my work. And as long as it's what is good enough to do the job, there you go. Like you, you know, college is great to have like make friends and, you know, have like kind of a community, but you don't need to go to the most expensive one. You don't need to go to, you know, anyone, you know, there's the, the internet. <laughs> I sound like a grandma, but yeah, the, there is the internet. There's like so many forums and discords and, there's so many forms of community now that you don't really 
need to uh, pay for it. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, also like some of the best people who I met at Pixar like didn't even go to art school. Also, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I just picked up a pencil and I started drawing and Disney was like, you're good, I'll take you. And that's <laughs> how they started their like 50 plus career. So <laughs> it's different for everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. I, I know people who didn't go to college either. They're like creative directors, art directors. I know people who were in a completely different career and then switched. Um, they're doing great. I, I don't, I think it's like, it's never too late and you don't really need an official stamp of approval from anybody to call yourself an artist. You really don't. Yeah. Okay, next question. This one's actually kind of interesting. Um, what are some things you, what are some things to consider when creating a contract with a client? Ooh. Cool. This I is like the, almost like the maths part of the SAT. This is like the <laughs> complicated <laughs> questions. <laughs> Uh, I would say deadlines like that's like if they were like the contract says this but then you deliver this but then they extend it or you extend it that has to all be super clear because that gets messy but yeah Caitlin sorry I didn't mean to cut you off <laughs> no it's okay um luckily for most of my clients they've had like contracts in place or they've been like sort of casual where the contracts don't have to be so precise but um there has been like structure and like like deadlines like this is the deadlines and these are the, del the deliverables so just knowing what you have to create that being very clear and then when it's due like that's yeah I agree that's very important yeah yeah I, I think one that I have found to be helpful um, is kill fees. Like I didn't used to do that. And then, you know, somebody mentioned it, I think somewhere on Instagram where somebody I was talking to was like, Oh, like kill fees, um, just, add, just add a kill fee. So in case it doesn't go through or in case, you know, Oh, Oh no. We lost cool. Cora. I, I think she'll hop back in. Um, okay. but yeah, kill fees can be, can be, it feels weird to add that in. Because, you know, you're like preemptively thinking about the end. Oh, welcome back. Yay. <laughs> okay. I'm so sorry. Like my Zoom just like canceled. Like what's going on? I'm like, and then my screen went black. I like, bought you like a year ago. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. No worries. We're just talking about kill fees and how it can feel weird to add that in a contract, but it can actually be helpful because, you know, if it, may anything go wrong, at least you um, get get paid for the time you dedicated, um, and any other time that you reserve for the client. You know, like a lot of the times, um, illustrators and animators are expected to kind of hold time for a client, and um, if the project finishes early, or if you said no to somebody else, like you gotta get paid um so yeah kofis um next question can you talk about some of the most exciting projects that came that, that came about that um, I, mean, I think this is a typo but can you talk about some of the most exciting projects that you've worked on during the pandemic and how those how those came about Um, I was approached to do this like Animal Crossing virtual gallery show and the gallery was like in the game and that was so much fun. <laughs> um, I did like an illustration of my character and I had to like translate it into the game and it was just it was just so much fun like it was it was probably my favorite project <laughs> this past year. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I would say I, I would say when I worked with my, um, I worked with this company called Infinity Ward and we, it was like a Twitch stream for Omen and HP's like new gaming system. And my friend had just introduced me to um, the art director there and was like, hey, they're looking for some new backgrounds. Do you want to do backgrounds for this Twitch stream they're doing? 
And so essentially like they had gamers that were going through this whole, like um, they were playing all these different games from each era. And so we had like from eight bit to 16, 64, all the way up till now. Um, and I had this like interesting kind of like a Ori kind of vibe to my background. I mean, like the style, it didn't look mm-hmm. like that end, but it was, it was super fun. And like the art director and Lauren were really awesome and were super easy going to, and like watching the whole trip, like the stream too. Cause we had like a bunch of great pixel artists on the project and stuff. Like it was, it was really fun. It was just super exciting and just like, oh, cool, I get to be part of this, like, game evolution thing, so it was fun. Yeah, that was cool. That's awesome. Is there anything you're working on right now that you'd like to share or talk about? Something exciting? Um, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Or, Kaylin, if you want to go ahead first. Um, I, hopefully, I plan on reopening my online shop soon, hopefully before the end of the year. I'm excited to, like, make new products. Uh, I'm also working on a few like collaborative projects and short films. Uh, one of them is uh, called Instant. It's uh, directed by my friend, Sarah Marshman. I'm very excited about that. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, and for me, um, I'm doing some art direction at our little studio called Starter Pack. We are right now we're pushing um, our GoFundMe to fund our first mental health comic. So little backstory in us, like we just like, we are trying to bridge or not bridge, sorry. We're trying to like end stigmas on mental health in general. So we have a lot of like social workers that work on our stuff and bring science to our comics. So we can kind of just start talking on emotional education and mental health awareness. So if you want to help, if you want to do that, you should help <laughs> go fund me. That would be awesome. <laughs> so yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, that's very exciting. I think we're at time because it's 8 one. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to add? A piece of advice, little nugget of wisdom, um, anything to sign off? Um, a good source of joy is having a mouse ear collection. So I highly recommend that. <laughs> Yes. And and a yay over your bed. Yeah, I know that really earlier. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would just say work on stuff that you like to do and don't do anything else besides that. Yeah. Or try to. Try not to do anything else besides that. Yeah. When you're doing personal work, like spoil yourself. Do do the things that like make you really excited. Like if it's like a like a fan project of like some show that you watch bringing up shows again or um just like something that's your own like your own creative idea like just do something really fun that you don't have to like answer to anybody it's just something that you love and you're excited about that's what I highly recommend that sounds (laughs) awesome and it doesn't even have to be portfolio work and just be like just for fun or like a gift for a friend or a family member, just something fun. Yes, gift your, gift your family and friends art. Yeah. <laughs> um, awesome. I think that that brings us to the end. Um, I think this is it. Thank you. Thank you both for doing this. It's been awesome, awesome chatting with you guys. Um, thanks for sharing your experiences and um, I get the wisdom and thank you for letting me interview you. It's, oh, been, you. Really, it's been an honor. Yeah, thanks for having us. <laughs> of course. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.